Memphis Spence. Now, Memphis, you tried to warn us, dog. You tried to warn us. You got flat from the LSU fans. You told them a notice of allegations was coming. Let's get into it. You had said it about a month and a half ago that you'd heard that Will Wade could possibly be getting a notice of allegations along with LSU. What were you hearing that then, and what are you hearing now? So this is what I was hearing then. Well, first of all, you know, this is a special situation for LSU. Um, this is outside of the realm of normal uh, allegations. They've sent this to the what I call the AARP. It's actually the IARP. <laughs> but they yeah. take so long, you know what I'm saying, that that it might as well be the AARP. Um, but this independent resolution process started up in 2019, somewhere, I think, right before the football season in 2019. And right. they threw, like, six different cases over there. Well, one of the cases – well, first of all, the reason why I started learning about this process is because, you know, I'm a Memphis alum, and Memphis is in a lot of – you know, M Memphis – is always in something. They're not in championships a lot. You know, every now and then they'll be a in a championship or in the Cotton Bowl, but they're always in trouble. So because they're always in trouble, you know, I'm a, I, that's, you know, D Rose. That's kind of how my show started popping off to begin with. People right. wanted to little aspects of it and everything else. And I was one of the people that was able to give it to him at the time. So I'm always learning about this process and how they try to change the process because, you know, there are certain situations and circumstances. When they brought the FBI in a couple of uh, years ago, they started coming up with this idea like, okay, obviously we're not able to do this, uh, you know, or do this alone. They're, the schools actually have more power than we do. We need a process outside of the normal NCAA process to start handling these. So there were six, six schools uh, that actually, they shifted these cases over and they're, you know, those six schools, bear a lot of power and weight uh, individually uh, across the, the the college platform. LSU is one of them. Memphis is one of them. Louisville, which is honestly, with everything going on, Louisville has the most ridiculous one. I don't know what is going to go on there. Yeah, um, you know, that's that's really the most egregious one out of out of all of them that that are out there. Uh, Kansas has one. Arizona. Uh, and I think NC State, they just finished that up. I was I was trying to get information on Memphis's and they were just like, yo, uh, and I. I probably can't say no, I can't say who that source is. <laughs> I have to protect that source because I'm not even supposed to have that source. Anyway, I was trying to get um, I, seriously, I, 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 I'm not supposed to. I was working with this person before they became part of this entire process. OK, um, but I uh, uh, I was trying to get information on, OK, when are we going to get charges? You know, when when it, when when it, when is our uh, notice of allegations coming out? And I found out that at the time they were working on uh, NC States and that came out, they dropped and that right. LSU was probably next. And then Kansas and Memphis will probably follow shortly thereafter. They're still doing some late work on Arizona um, and Louisville's a hot mess, so there's I don't know what is going to happen then. Um, but I kind of found out what the order that they were working on things, and I was like, hmm, they're probably going to start dropping this right around tournament time because that's what they want to do to kind of get this out in the open during the tournament, uh, especially if they start making decisions on where people are seated or, you know, if they can start leaving people out or whatnot. So I expected, you know, probably Kansas – Memphis and LSU, um, because they usually Arizona has a out of all the programs in terms of basketball, the NCAA loves Arizona more than any of us. Which is they so, hate us. which is so wild. They they hate us. I don't know why, because Arizona's in trouble all the time too. Um, but they hate us. Uh, so I thought, you know, okay, you know, normally they come out with this sometime either right before or right after the tournament. Uh, so things that aren't dropping before the tournament will probably be dropping after the tournament. Um, but that's kind of how I found out the order at which they were working on things. And that's why I knew I was like, oh, no, they're, they're still working on something. Now, how serious those allegations are, I don't even th I don't think they're as serious. I know they're not as serious as Louisville's. Um, 
They're probably not as serious as 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 Kansas is, from what I'm gathering as well. Um, Memphis, LSU. Mm, th- there's a whole lot of ambiguity in what I'm reading or or what I'm finding out about what the allegations are. And there's really nothing. There's nothing new. Pat Forty didn't put anything, and I love Pat Forty. He got the beat on me. I was actually producing another show uh, when that news came out, and I was trying to call up to to Indianapolis to to, to try and get that notice of allegation. I couldn't get it in my hand before your show, um, you know. Uh, but but hopefully I'll have it sometime this week. Uh, but I was trying to figure out exactly it, did they figure out anything new, um, and they could have. But I don't know of any anything new. We knew about the t- wiretap, you know, right, and, right. And, and no way being on that. We knew about the booster that allegedly hired uh, uh, a player's father, you know, and I guess the only new information there was like there was one hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars that 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 changed hands for that position. That was the only thing I didn't know about that. Um, but still, there's still. That's probably the most debatable because, you know, if, so, if someone wants to hire somebody, regardless, you know, they're like no show work. It's like, first of all, it was his father. But second of all, you know, there's a lot of people not working and making money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's, there's, people I get hired they all the that. time and, and do I, nothing. Memphis, right? I will say, let me do that. Hey, 180, I'm, I'm, I'm available myself. <laughs> Cut it in half. I'll do it for half. Hell, I'll do it for a third and not show up. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, Mark Emmerich, he's making 2.9. I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, I shouldn't. I probably shouldn't have said that. They're, they're probably not going to get me that information on time now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of people sitting around doing nothing for money. So, you know, that's the most debatable. Uh, of all of the allegations and you know the obj giving out cash to players what are you going to do about that <laughs> i don't know uh, but that's probably the one that 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 is least disputable because i think we saw locker room videos of him actually handing out cash yeah but, and, and memphis they already self-imposed that's, exactly. why I don't understand, that's why i don't understand about pat 40 and why i don't necessarily understand now Look, the big thing is is that he was getting ripped on in reference to, oh, well, Pat, if it's ever coming, it, then come with it. And, and, look, you mentioned it, and now it's here. And I feel like – and tell me if I'm wrong here, but reading you and what you're saying, it feels as if that you're kind of saying you don't think that it's going to be enough to fire Will Wade. That's, I mean, now, if I'm, if I'm misconstruing what you're saying, please correct me, but that's how I'm taking what you're saying at the current moment. Am I, am I correct there? What I know now isn't enough to fire him. Okay. Because what I know right now, without seeing the actual notice of allegations, I don't have it in my hand to read, um, is the same thing that we've known for a long time. You know, hey, he's on the wiretap saying these things. Um, There's already, a you know, somebody self-imposed. Now, if there's any new information um, or if they got one of those, uh, somebody inside, uh, they have this immunity thing where they can get somebody, it's kind of like they get a special immunity uh, that can be given out by this this process to somebody inside to cooperate with them fully, pretty much basically to rat on everybody. Um, and I was wondering if they had somebody inside the LSU program that knew a little bit more about the situation that they gave special immunity to, um, because that could take a little bit longer in the process. And I'm, they may be doing that for this entire deal. Uh, but... Um, if they did, then that person may have given them more information in which at that point, if we know what the information is, then maybe it, there's a situation where you want to, you know, throw Will Wade on the sword. Because what can't happen is this affect the football team. I heard you say it, but no, that's serious. You, this can't right. affect the football team at all. So if Will Wade has to, if, 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 if Woodard has to go out there and say, man, it's been real, you know, it's been real. We have to, we have to fire you for cause. Um, then that's what's going to have to happen to protect LSU football at this point. And you know, there's, it's LSU. You're going to get whatever coach you know uh, that you want. Don't hire Rick Pitino. Uh, just don't do that. <laughs> don't don't throw, don't throw yourself in another situation. Uh, Louisville uh, found that out the hard way. But um, you know, you're going to get the coach that basically that you want. 
Uh, you know, it, I wouldn't worry too much about Will Wade, even though I think Will Wade's kind of a gangster for lasting this long, honestly. <laughs> I, well, I, yeah, right. I mean, look, there is some level of gangster Al Capone-ish, you know, <laughs> say hello to my little friend type right. of scenario here. I, I think Memphis from everybody, and we have a lot of people in here asking the same question. Well, two things. Number one. LSU did get sued for fifty or $100 million from Sharon Lewis, who was a part of LSU football and the recruiting building. I wonder if she had anything to say, uh, you know, about this. So when you say that, you know, you bring up a very interesting point there. Uh, uh, could there be an immunity, you know, regardless of how that goes? Let's see until we get there. Let's not go there now. Um, but we do have a lot of qu people question. And, and Memphis, you answered this question, but elaborating on it. Okay. You just talked about – Look, why does it take so long? You talked about the immunity deal. Um, I'm going to ask my own way in this. Man, two years is way too damn long. Four years is way too long. Memphis, this happened in 2017. I, I mean, look, Ed Orgeron has been hired, won an Addy, and fired in the time that Will Wade has done all of this. Do you think that if they don't – should there be something in the NCAA where – if they don't file or give a notice of allegations or come down with a case within five years of ruling, then it's null and void. Like, can we come up with something like that? There is a process like that, and that's the normal process where after four years, there's actually a statute of limitations, which is four years. Uh, and the only thing that breaks that statute of limitation is gross negligence uh, or somebody trying to hide it from being found out or like Penn, like Penn state or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Like Baylor, Penn state, that type of a thing. Um, those are usually the things that break that, that, that gross negligence type thing. Cause it's usually four years, especially if it's, you know, um, it has to do with, unless there's a pattern, that's the other thing. There's a pattern. It happened six years ago. It happened eight years ago. And, you know, maybe something's being swept under the rug then. But if it's not a pattern, if it's not gross negligence, and it's not nobody, anybody hiding it, there's literally a, la a statute of limitation. In the normal process, they move these six cases over to the AARP. Why did I, why do I, why did I start naming them the AARP instead of the IARP? Because it takes because so damn long. Forever. And one of the processes, one of the reasons why is because the people actually, there's, there's three firms, investigative firms, that they've contracted a lot of this work out to. Um, and, you know, they're independent. They're supposed to not be associated with sports at all. Um, and, you know, they're doing their own thing. They're not worried about, uh, you know, how long it takes because it's outside of the normal jurisdiction. This is something that, that once, once it gets here, you're just in purgatory until something happens. Um, but normally you're right. I mean, Blake, you're, you're you're generally right, except for when a case actually goes over to this new uh, IARP uh, uh, situation. So, Memphis, uh, what do you think come – and I guess if you had to make a decision right now with just everything that you know, okay, now I get this can change. Nobody's holding your, your feet to the fire on this one, right? But if you had to assume – what happens in all of this to these coaches right now today with the information you have, what would you, what would you say to like maybe even Will Wade and let's get specific, like to Will Wade, do you think that he, is he going to be at LSU next year is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. 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 If I had, if and I'm not a gambling man, I'm an investor. But if I had to actually <laughs> gamble on this, right, uh, I would gamble that Will Wade's still there, based on what I know now. Um, I think that there, there, now, there may be. He may not be able to coach um, for a little while. He may get a suspension, um, and if that suspension is longer than a year then Woodard may say, hey, this is actually cause. I want to move in a new direction. But he doesn't have to fire him. You know, he could keep him on, have one of the assistants coach, you know. Um, if, if he wanted to keep him, he could find a way to do that. Uh, but, you know, he may have a show cause after this uh, whole deal is done. Um, 
for at least a year. Uh, that's what I'm 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 expecting there to be probably a one year show cause on Will Wade, um, even after all of the 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 self penalties given out by by LSU, uh, it, it, up to about a year show cause on Will Wade, uh, unless there's new information. And like I said, the minute I get that in my hands, I'll you know I'll be DMing you. You know how you know how we do. I'll be DMing you and and shooting you some information. Uh, when I get it. But um, from what I know now, I don't think there's a reason to fire him right now, unless unless Woodard has somebody in mind already and is using this as a, you know, we should have really placed better in the SEC anyway. Maybe I need to maybe this is a good time uh, to, to cut ties. And and I see this more as a reason for Woodard to move on from him. If he thinks he's underperformed, um, then to act because I don't know what's going on with Pinson, um, but that dude's a baller. Anyway, um, if if Will, if Woodard wants to move on, this would be his reason. But right now, I don't see any reason to get rid of him or like a five year show cause or anything of that nature. Uh, that would just pretty much, you know, get kill this guy's career. Mm hmm. You know, Spence, for, for me, it's just – it's I, I'm ready for it to be over. You know, man, I've been doing this yeah. since 2017, and I, I, I'm really just tired of it. And quite honestly, um, as they say in the movie Friday, I'm about to start throwing these hands if something just doesn't come now. I, I mean, that's just <laughs> – yeah. I'm sick of it. Like, let's get done. You know, and look, Clemson's open. Okay, yeah. Clemson, and, and that's where Will Wade uh, graduated from. As a, that's his alma mater. What if he wants to make a move? You know, like look, and we'll and we'll see with all that. But mm -hmm. you know, I, and I really appreciate you you talking about that and being so informative because you were so connected to that. And I, I think it was good, some good insight. Uh, Memphis Spence joining us. Follow us. Follow him on Twitter at Memphis Spence for all of his great content. Me Memphis, let's get to us some football before we, we get you on out of here. Uh look, Jane Daniels. I, I mean, I'm a big fan. They want to run the RPOs. They want to run the zone reads. When you saw that he was committed and coming to LSU, what was your initial thought seeing Jaden Daniels coming to Brian Kelly's new team in, in Baton Rouge? My initial thought is, wow. R rarely is there a time where I'm like, okay, this actually probably works out for both the player and the team. Right. Sometimes, you know, um, you, get, you get somebody and you're like, oh, that's great for the team but he's just going to be stockpiled as a player. He may not see the field at all. Uh, sometimes you're like, man, if the team could figure out how to use this guy, you know, but this is, this is one of those rare situations where I think Jaden Daniels actually has a shot to, to, to be QB one. I agree. And the skill set that that guy has with LSU receivers and somebody blocking for him, because he was he was running for his life at ASU, no lie. He was just running for his life, and it, I was like, man, he can throw on the run. But what happens if he has time? What happens if he has four or five seconds oh. to actually get through his reads? So you mean like when he has a guy like Brandon Ayuk who single handedly almost beat the Los Angeles Lambs with the Forty ers he can actually do something interesting. He can. He can. He is a. He's QB one somewhere, but I think he can be QB one at LSU. Um, he has a, he has a skill set that I would love to see Brian Kelly be able to, 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 to mold. And he, he's almost like raw talent right now. Uh, the system that he was in, I don't want to say too much about uh, ASU, anything bad because Memphis gets quarterbacks from there all the time, but basically, <laughs> They've been sending quarterbacks out a lot over these past five years. We've gotten like three of them. One of them, Brady White, you know that guy. Right, right. Uh, you know, we, hey, they, they've, they've, they've been nice to us, they, but, but quarterbacks have been leaving there for a reason. And they've turned out to, you know, you look around, and you're like, man, um, this guy's pretty talented. What, what happened? And then you hear their story and you're like, oh. So, uh, but I think this is a really good situation for LSU. You have depth at QB1. He's going to be able to do things. Well, I won't say that. 
he's going to be able to compete for QB1. I'll say that. I'm not going to say he can do things better than, but he will be able to compete for QB1. Oh, he can run better than Miles Brennan. I mean, look, okay. I, I, I mean, I saw a turtle beat Miles Brennan in a race once, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Memphis, one more, and we'll, we'll get you out of here, I promise. Yeah. Um, how much did you watch of the combine? I didn't get to see a lot of it, but I saw a lot of the highlights. Were you able to see some of it? And I want to piggyback off of that question. I, I watch a lot of the combine. I, we weren't there this year. Uh, we right. were there before COVID. The years before COVID, it closed down. We didn't get in this year. Um, but uh, one of my um, uh, a guy that 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 I've known for a while. Uh, he's he's up there, and he gave me a lot of good information. Um, and I. There were a couple of dudes. Uh, well, first of all, this is the fastest combine we've ever seen, and we're trying to figure out why. Uh, because you know, the, when you have, I you have know, a theory like, about that, but continue. I have a theory, but continue. What, what, what? Let me. No, no, no. What's your theory on that? I want to hear this theory. My theory is is that last year you had the least amount of kids enter their name into the NFL draft and return to school for the extra COVID year than oh, we've yeah. ever seen before. That's so right. normally you would have one person maybe run a four two nine or a four three flat or whatever. Right. This right. year you have two. Well, why do you have two? Both of those kids return to their programs using the COVID year to return. That, that's why I think Memphis that you had so it was the fastest combine because and here's another thing in essence you had more kids at the combine because of the extension than you had ever had. So you want to but 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 but. You shouldn't be having that many that many dudes running four threes. There's no reason on God's green planet a man should be six seven, three hundred and sixty six pounds running a four seven. Did Let you see that, it. dude, bro? So when we talk about Georgia and we talk about the SEC, Memphis, that's what we talk about, right? Like exactly, exactly. That, that's it. That's my it. wife actually looked at me and said, "Man, he weigh, you know he weighs about fifty pounds more than you. You can't do that." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, girl, stop playing. Um, but uh, no, we saw, we saw. You know, probably, you know what? You know what should have happened after your wife said that? <laughs> that should have came up after that. Yes, yes, yes. But um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, Ed Ingram and uh, Derek Stingley are are were were darlings in this. That's what I've heard. Um, Rick Saratella is a guy. Uh, he does. I have him on the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl stuff a lot. He's a scout. Uh, he, um, what's his uh, uh, NFL Draft Bible? He's with um, okay. SI, and uh, he's an NFL scout. He does a lot of stuff with the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl. He provides information to them and a lot of the NFL teams. Uh, he was letting me know that uh, Ed Ingram and Stingley were two of the darlings that came out. Uh, a lot of high. You know, a lot of a lot of good things were said about uh, them. That's by very NFL. interesting. Um, you know, uh, everybody tested fairly well. I don't think that I don't know. Um, I didn't hear anything about uh, Cordell Flott. Uh, that was the LSU guy I, that kind of got lost in the weeds. I think uh, there were some good things about uh, Ty Davis Price. Honestly, I thought that's what this segment was going to be about. Uh, but Ty Davis Price, uh, you know, there there are a couple of teams interested in him. Uh, but I'm not sure if he improved his draft stock at all. Um, but, uh, you know, there, Do you there's... you think he gets that 40-time lower in the 4-4s? Four you think – I mean, is it, last question, I promise. I keep doing this to you. But, yeah, yeah. You know, is he a draftable running back? Because I think he's he, he is, but I, I see like a six, fifth, sixth, seventh round grade on him. But Memphis, again, I mean, what what, what do you think? What are you hearing, he, too? I'm going to – he's probably – so when it comes to – when you only hear, like, two or three teams uh, liking a guy, he's probably a sixth, seventh rounder. But what's been the, – the, the strategy lately has been, um, you know, kind of making the other team flinch, especially if there's two teams, and picking that guy up as one of the undrafted free agents that you have on your list. Right. Uh, that's been a strategy for teams uh, here lately. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for cap reasons or whatever, but – um, but picking that guy up as an undrafted free agent, you really want um, – well, rule of thumb is if five or more teams want you, you're probably going to get drafted. If it's two or three, 
uh, you got a 50 50 chance, but you're, you're likely going to be signed as a undrafted free agent. So, um, so I'm thinking that he may be in that high undrafted free agent, maybe late sixth, seventh round, uh, unless, you know, there are a lot of things pro days. There are a lot of things that could, could change that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. There's still, it's still a process. It's still a good month and a half until we have the draft. So. Bum, 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 No better sound in all, on all the sports. I, yeah, I, yes, I, yes, I yes. yes. Uh, By the way, I'm here in Tampa for the SEC uh, uh, tourney, so this this should be this should be fun. Don't ask Will Wade if he made a strong ass offer. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up a sign that says that you know in the crowd. Oh well, you know VCU grew uh, student section dressed dressed up like the FBI. So I mean that was, that was pretty legendary. Uh, Memphis Spence joins us or joined us. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at. Memphis Spence. Uh, 